Uh, welcome back to Ricketts Reef. Um, today I'm going to do a video, start a video, a little series on interceptor treatment. Yes, this sucks. I've had a couple of craptacular things happen to my tank. First is my beloved Mimic Tang died. Yeah, he wasn't looking too good when I bought him. Um, and I didn't quarantine him. I thought he'd heal up and do well just like every other fish I've gotten. But no, 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 I found him under a rock and Pepper, my shrimp, ate his face. So yeah. Not good. Loved them. Gonna get another one for sure, but not until I, I set up a better quarantine system. Until then, until then, I, I, I've got another problem. Um, a couple of my Montipore Digitatas I thought were bleaching out because of my new LED lights. Uh, no. <laughs> I guess there's some black bugs on them. Similar to red bugs, but instead of eating Acroporas, these guys go for Monties. And you know, I don't have a huge infestation of them. I actually took the frag out that had them on them, the, the main one, and gave it a bath in Revive, and that got rid of most of them. But there's a couple little buggers that just, no matter how many times I use Revive, they just won't die. So anyway, I've done some reading, done some research, and apparently this stuff, Interceptor for dogs, will kill red bugs, black bugs, stuff like that. The only challenge is, uh, one, getting all your crustaceans out of the tank uh, and two, all your pods are probably going to die. That's okay, pods come back pretty quick so I'm not too worried about that and I don't have any pod eaters. Uh, and every time I look at my display I don't really have that many pods. They're primarily in my refugium. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's my cardinal fish. <coughs> anyway, so I'm following, I'll post a link on the side of what to do with this interceptor crap, but basically um, one of these tablets for large dogs uh, will basically treat about 380 to 400 gallons. So what you do is you, you crush it up with a spoon and a bowl. I did it. It's really simple. You don't need to go out and buy one of those medicine crushers. Bowl, spoon, a little bit of pressure, and all of a sudden it just the pill just goes in the powder. It's pretty good. Uh, I've added the, the pill to some seawater. I, I, I've measured out the dosage. I'm going to do a little higher dosage because I've read it's not a big deal to do a little higher so I've just basically cut the pill in half. Um, I estimate with my tank and sumps and all that stuff I've got roughly around uh, 150, 180 gallons somewhere around there. So around the 200 gallon mark is just fine for, uh, for treatment. It's just a little bit over. Next thing you gotta do, well, I'll go downstairs and show you. I'd also like to thank the puppy for giving me one of his interceptor pills. Right on, dude. High five. Yay! Saving your brothers. Your your your, your coral buddies. Yeah, yeah, I know you love them. Okay, let's go. Alright, the next step before adding the medication to your system is to disconnect your airline tube and your skimmer. Now, the reason for that is you want the water to keep going through your skimmer so it hits as many places as it possibly can where water is being hit originally. Um, so you want it to keep running. You want all your stuff to keep running. Also disconnecting your phosphate and carbon reactors. Uh, those ones you can probably just take out and clean instead of having water run through it. It's probably just as good to, uh, to wash them out. Eh, probably needs to be done anyway. But everything else keep running. Um, the medication is supposed to hit as much stuff as possible. I've read six hours is the minimum you should run this stuff through your system. I'll probably do about a 12 hour dose. I've uh, read good reports on 12 hours. Yeah, I know this area is a mess, but I've got plans to clean it and make it all cool. I've also got plans to get new quarantine system up and running so I don't run into this shit anymore. Uh, <coughs> that's about it for the for the pump section for the sump section. Um, other thing is to get the shrimp and hermits out that you want to survive. Now, I don't know if it's going to work, but I've devised this little shrimp lure. I've taken a raw piece of shrimp and tied it to a piece of uh, fishing line. I'm going to throw that in the tank. And if I know my shrimp, at this time of day when the lights are off, he's going to be all over that. And I'll be able to grab him with the net, throw him in a 10 gallon with some live rock, for him to hide under and pick at and basically I'm gonna keep him there for the duration of the treatment I only keep that one shrimp I don't have any crabs or anything else for now 
so that'll be that'll be easy. You know, if I had a whole bunch of hermits and stuff like that, that would kind of uh, blow. All right, so let's do that, and I'll I'll be right back. All right, I've got old Jeff. That uh, that little trap worked like a charm. He went right for it. He's in there somewhere. Oh, there he is back there. You see his tail. This is just five gallons of water from the tank, and uh, I got some live rocket heater, power head. And I'll just keep them in there for the three weeks because what happens is you have to do one dose a week apart, minimum three times is what everyone recommends. So he should be fine in there. I'll just make sure I got my water line. I'll top it off. Uh, I'll feed just kind of sparingly so he, so the water doesn't get too bad. I might do a couple little changes here and there, but yeah, he should be fine. Hopefully, uh, he's a big, strong shrimp. He eats a lot, so I, I think he'll be okay. Time to go throw the medication into the tank. Um, you see I've got, uh, you can hear it there, uh, it's the skimmer sucking air because it's the, the little tube is just sticking right almost out of the water. Um, everything's ready to go. So I'm going to go throw the medication in the tank. And here is my ch water chain. So what happens after 12 hours is you add new carbon, your normal amount of carbon, and do about 25% water change. Uh, this is roughly 25%. I might add a, uh, another few gallons to this because I've used some with that tank and so on and so forth. But that's about it. I'll give you an update in a day. Well, the only problem I did run into with this uh, treatment is when I turned my skimmer back on, the impeller part of my pump that's supposed to be connected to that um, broke. I don't know if you can see that there. We uh, snapped. There's nothing in there, no snails or nothing, so it was just, I don't know, a bum piece. It kind of sucks. I've been in contact with Coral View. They actually answered my email on a Saturday, which was pretty cool because I'm stressing out here because, you know, you need the skimmer to take some of this interceptor out of your system. Should be okay. Uh, hopefully they can they can fast track me a piece for my, for my pump there. Uh, if you can see it's over there. Hopefully that's all that's wrong with it and I can get that soon and get my skimmer back online. If not, um, I know the guy from Saltwater Connection, so I might be able to work something there. But whatever, we'll see what happens. Hopefully they can get it to me because apparently their customer service is fantastic. Alright, so here we are 24 hours after the interceptor treatment. As I mentioned, I only have Pepper the shrimp, which is safe and secure in his 10 gallon home behind the wall there. Um, so he's doing fine. All the corals are doing great. Everything looks good. Uh, while I'm at it, might as well do a coral update. So let's kind of kind of take a peek what we got going on here. Oh, on a uh, sad note, the mimic tang passed away. Yep, he just stopped eating and basically wasted away. I found him one day having his face eaten by pepper, which uh, yeah, it's kind of cruel, but. Messed up. One day I will get another Mimic Tang. I do love those Tangs. They're fantastic, but I will quarantine it for a good long time and make sure it's absolutely healthy before putting it in it in a somewhat stressful environment. Okay, let's do a small update on the corals. Since I haven't done one in a long time. Again, you're going to have to forgive some of the pale colors. Without the blue LEDs on, I'm kind of losing some of the, uh, the hints and tints. Big A can, it's always getting bigger. Frog spawn, actually it's growing a new head, you can't see it, but at night when it's all retracted, it's it's splitting, which is pretty cool. These mushrooms, I'm a little worried they're getting huge, <laughs> absolutely massive, look at the size of that red one. Um, there's another red one up there. How it got there, I, I don't know. Um, green one's good. Two other green ones there. I got another one back there. It's a, uh, I don't know what color that one is, but eventually I assume that this side is going to be covered. Um, if you see, I do have some bubble algae. Once I'm done the interceptor treatment, I will be getting a couple emerald crabs and hopefully they will take care of that. I just can't be bothered getting in there and picking it all off a bit at a time. You'll also notice that the sides of my glass have a nice thin carpet of green algae. Um, I don't mind it. I think it looks nice actually. Snails love it. Tangs love it. Uh, I'm gonna leave it. I could scrape it off, but I just, I don't care right now. I think it's pretty. 
Um, I'm going to get some other tangs later on and some other algae eating fish and this is a nice welcome to them. Down up front here you're going to see I have a whole bunch of digitata. Um, these are purple, especially when I have the blue lights on. Right now they're looking kind of brown. That's because the, it's the blue, the actinic, that really sets off the purple color. Got a uh, chunk of bird's nest with a piece of nori stuck to it. Uh, I'll have to take that off, but it's a nice little coral. There I've got some some red zoes, my red zoes. And I've got <laughs> some my green zoes, they're doing well. And they've got a nice big bristle worm on them. Purple ones are in behind it, they're doing fine. Here is a frag of the red. Now you notice how it's bleached out. It's because of those bugs. Um, I assume and I hope that once once it gets some time away from the bugs it'll get some color and some light back into it which will be really good. Orange Monty doing fine. I moved some frags around. That one used to be up here. And all these frags are doing well. Uh, Tri-color here. You can't see the greens without the the actinics on, a little tiny piece of a frag I knocked off while cleaning, threw it on there, see how it'll do. Bird's nest on a new plug there, that's my old bird's nest that never grew because it couldn't grow on the plug because it was surrounded by bubble algae. This guy is growing onto the rock now, you can probably see down there, which is pretty cool. That one's got all sorts of stalks coming up uh, ever since putting in these LEDs and they just keep coming and coming, which is great. These acans in the back, lots of growth. If you notice there, on those guys in the back, I call them my chocolate chip acan, or acro, sorry, acro. Um, there's like a, a divot on some of the branches. That's because I noticed one day that there was some bleaching going on. What it was is my LEDs were just way too bright. So I've got my whites, my white LEDs down to, I don't know, a third of what they could be doing. And my blues are still pretty high. Um, what that did is after I, I switched that, as you can see, the coral started growing like crazy again and getting its color back. So, yeah, you can see in the branches the, the life cycle of what's happened to this coral. This uh, purple tort, especially when I got the blue lights on, is just incredible and it's growing really well. New branches all the time. A couple blue millies in the back doing well. That's about it for this side. On this side, whatever this guy is, I can't remember the name, is doing well. Uh, again, without the blues, you can hardly see the green tinge that's in them. This is another purple Millie, really doing well. Um, really likes this light and flow. The, the polyp extension on them is just incredible. Really fuzzy. We've got that red Monty cap. Uh, I've moved it on this side, and ever since moving on this, this side, I've started to notice some growth which is really good because I really want red Monty. That's nice. Um, this is actually six months newer than that bird's nest. And this one has grown way better than that one. I don't know what the difference is other than uh, this one had bubble algae on the frag plug. I don't know if it's the same species. It looks the same. came from the same place. But this one just did amazingly better. In fact, this frag down there is a branch I knocked off of this one. You know, that one over there, I couldn't do it. I think because it couldn't secure a good base that uh, it didn't grow branches very far, but it grew stubby little branches. And now that it's got a new base, hopefully it'll spread out and its branches will grow really well. Uh, another tricolor, white and blue, doing very well. I've got a couple of those in the tank. Hey, you fish. Uh, this Duncan is just crazy now. Um, he's got over 30 heads. When I got him, he had six. So yeah, doing well. Got this, this guy. Now I see the tips are turning a different color. Like, there's still flesh and stuff on them, but they're, they're a light color, which is pretty cool. Of course, the candy cane, doing fine. This Monty is doing good. Some days in the middle it can look a little pale, but then it comes back. So very strange how that happens. Got some green slimers on the side. They're doing fine. Got a blue Monty cap in the back. You know, a lot of, a lot of the same stuff. Just, just 
just a lot of new growth. There's my blue tang. Now hopefully without the protein skimmer um, I don't get a lot of problem algae coming up. But once I get it get it back up and running I do have to buy some new snails. Some have died over time, some crabs. Because um, I do have some little bits of algae growing here and there. Nothing major. Just enough to make me say, hey, got to do something about this. I've also been way overfeeding, uh, trying to get the new fish nice and healthy and happy in the tank, and that's going to have to stop. But all the fish seem fine. The uh, blue tang looks fine. He really pesters the hell out of the, uh, the clown and vice versa. They just love bugging each other all day, constantly. He'll actually knock the clown out of his candy cane coral, and then he'll take it over, and then they'll just play back and forth. Eventually the clown will win because he is a vicious SOB. So anyway, that's the tank. It is doing really well. A lot of good growth. Some challenges. Just working through them. Alright, 